So as you can tell by the title, I will be critiquing this time Shibata Aya's photo book. Now, I know what you're thinking, why didn't he critique Maria's? Well, I was kind of more interested in this one to see what it had exactly. I could kind of guess what that photo book had, but this one I have no idea, so I'm in for the surprise to see what it is, and plus I like this member anyway. <laughs> so I just opened it and no plastic wrap, and I don't see a bonus in here. I don't know if they snatched that out or something, but it isn't there. But anyway, forgetting about that, let's go on to the critique. Starting off, of course, like every time, with the front cover. And also something that I noticed while looking at the front cover, it seems like this this ribbon here doesn't really fit that well. It kind of bends it. Watch, if I take it off, now it's perfectly fine. But when I put it on, it, it's like a little too tight, so it makes the front cover bend a little. Anyway, moving on to the front cover, it actually is pretty nice and simple. It isn't too complex or is it too complicated. It's actually a nice simple portrait and it actually gives us a sample of what's to come. And plus it does show off a little bit of personality with the pen in her hand and it looks like a tablet on her other hand. So it's all there, a little personality, a little bit of beauty, and simplicity. And I also like how it's blue all around thanks to the color balance they used. And it going with the red shirt actually complements each other very nicely. And then we go to the back which is actually barren, completely white. You guys know how I don't like the empty spaces. But in this case I think it's because of cost, less with actually having something to show. I imagine if they had to come up with something, they would be able to show something in the back, but it costs way more to print something in the back than it does just printing in the front. Then we move on to the inside cover, which is actually pretty nice. Again, it's very simple, but it shows the environment. I mean, obviously she's going to be in the beach wearing this, but seeing a little bit of the beach, even if it's out of focus, it's still good. And especially with showing it like this, it puts more emphasis on her. And I like how it's super tech sharp. And look, the horizon level is down here, nice out of the way, not cutting someone's head off. It's very nice. Another thing I noticed is the hair. The, the hair is actually covering from the sun, so giving the face shade, which makes it more even and less blotchy looking. So this is actually little things that I've noticed about so far this photo book that gets me excited to see what's inside. And then the back is just extended out of focus. And again, nothing to complain about there. Now first page when we open it up, it is barren, but then when we open up to the next page, bam, we get a big old sign that says Aya Shibata Photo Book. And this is actually pretty interesting because I haven't seen this done before where they actually introduce it inside of the photo book itself. So this already gives me a sign that they are a little bit more creatively free than some of the other photo books. And plus it's a nice background image, but still showing her and showing a little bit of fun in this. So again, really nice, like, transition into the book itself. But then we get to the next photo and here we have her just swimming around with everything in focus except for her and it being a little blurry. There, there are ways to get light inside of a pool. You need some pretty strong strobes outside and then shooting in. Another way is getting actual reflectors inside and trying to reflect it to the body. But in this case, I feel like the images could have been reversed and it would have felt a little better. Although I do say I still like this a lot. And then you move on to the next page, which is actually a little weird because as, first of all, I like that they don't waste any space. But cutting it right here and putting the image right there is a little bit distracting. It's like showing just like a little bit and when it prints out, it looks kind of weird. I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about this image right here in general. I feel like it's a little bit too landscape to put it right here and then just cut it off right away. But then she comes out and takes a breather from the pool to the beach, she teleported. But in this one, we can see it's not exactly the most glamour image, it is more personal than that. It is from the perspective that you are looking at photos that you took from her. This is what this vibe gives off to me. I don't know how I feel about these borders right here. I know why they needed it, because of the whole composition and the cropping of the photo. But I'm not a huge fan of them. Next is these photos right here, and I like them because they're fun. Right here, I could complain about how this is all white from the sand and it's at a, it looks like it's at a weird upper angle. But the fact that it's so fun and so in the moment makes up for it. And then right here, we see her with the empty bottle. I don't know if she drank it really fast or just spilled it out. But other than that, you can see that this is a little bit more playful. It isn't, again, so serious and so model-y like we've seen before. 
And I do have to mention that I'm really liking the lens that this person is using because as you can see, this is totally tech sharp and then like even like right here, it's already starting to blur. And that's thanks to the long lens that they're using for this photo, which really helps give that shallow depth of field. Next is this image and this image is actually pretty good. I just wish that she was cropped maybe like right here and then show off the rest kind of like you did on the inside cover. But I do have to say that even though the sun looks like it's at 3 p.m., it still is pretty good light on the face and that's thanks to all the coverage with the hands and the hair. So a photographer really has an eye for that as I've seen in other images. And one more thing in this photo is this line right here. If you see this line, this line is not straight. It's leading towards her. Again, it is that example of leading lines as we've seen before in other photo books. Only thing that bothers me is the cropping of the arm, but we see the rest of her, so it isn't that damaging. Next, we move on to this page, which actually has a blurry picture, but next to it is something related to a high-key image. Now, a high-key image is when someone wears white or very, you know, bright clothes, and they usually have, like, lighter skin, and the background is, like, blown out or very light. So, this is a good example of high key because this has everything. It has the clothes, the skin, the background. So in this case, it does work out. Because usually, as I say, the highlights are blown out as you see over here, and it's usually fairly distracting. Your eye tends to go over there. But with all the elements in this picture, it actually works for the image itself. And not to mention that the lighting is actually really great. That's thanks to them being under the shade and being at the edge of it, which is why we get the edge of light over here on the hair. And thanks to that, again, we get good lighting on the face. Next, we move on to this image, which I have to say is very, very tech sharp. And I do like the aspect of it. And I kind of like what they do with the composition here. Again, you can't be right in the middle with this one because then <laughs> it looks like she's like separated by her eyes. But in this case, I do like it because it is off to the side and over here we get white. And as people, especially in English, we read left to right and Japanese too, they read left to right. So being left to right, you start here with the break and then bam, you get a whole bunch of lead up to the face, which is a very nice technique that people do. Instead of being right in the middle, they move a little bit to the right just to get a little bit of a break and then being right here, kind of reading left to right. And again, that those eyes are super tech sharp. I really like it and it kind of looks like she's forming a heart with her hands, adding a little bit of personality. And something interesting here, they actually show her washing the apple, which is a little bit of storytelling. Like, usually storytelling in some photo books is like, look at this building. But in this case, it's actually going a progression of her holding the apple, washing it, and then eating it. So it is interesting to see how this story developed from the beginning to the end, even though it is someone eating an apple. Here we have another example of what we saw earlier with the high key lighting. She's wearing white and she has lighter skin. I mean, that's obvious, but we see the background being light as well. So it is a little bit of the high key, but we have a little bit of darkness over here from the trees, adding a little bit more detail in the image than we saw before. Now, although I do like the image before because I think the posing was a little bit better, I feel like this one is still very simple, but yet adding complexity with more texture in it. And something else with the posing in this one, it's not straight on, very parallel. It's actually very off angle, which actually looks more appealing to the eye. Next, we move on to this image, which I really don't like. It's, first of all, crooked. Second of all, everything is in focus, causing everything to become distracting, especially in the background, since there's so much texture, it is very distracting. And second of all, it is blown out, unfortunately. Over here, you can see it's like almost pure white. So that does cause a little bit of distraction because over here it's all dark and then right here it's all bright again causing your eye to go towards that instead of focusing on her. Now we have this image over here which I actually really like. It isn't the high key one we've seen before but I do like something about it and that is the lighting for this image is actually really really good. First of all that's thanks to her being in the shade with the sun being all around her. Again majority of the light is coming from our left side her right side because of this big wall of flowers, as we can see in this image over here. But thanks to this, we can actually see there's some shadow over here. Even if it's a little green, it doesn't bother me because I think the bikini being green helps it out just a little bit. 
but the light being over here really shapes the body and helps out accentuate features. And plus having the light wrap all around her except for this side is actually very nice because as you can see right here on the hair, we do get lights separating her from the background and making it look very nice. But then immediately we move on to this image which is totally blue, nothing wrong with that. Kind of makes her look like she's out in the wilderness and nowhere to go, she's lost in the sea. But I don't like, again, how the water warps bodies and I feel like it's very difficult to get it when you're just run and gun. And again, I do want to say, if you look at this example, both eyes are in shade. The nose is a little bit on the highlight, but it isn't overexposed, so it is fine. And it seems like, again, as I said before, a photographer really knows where the light is falling on the face and probably told her, oh, turn a little bit more over here. All right, there, we got it. Next, we move on to this image right here, which is actually the introduction to a new section. And having lights like this all around, having her earrings, that's a very nice, important detail there. And having the hair a little bit flowing in the wind are actually big features to see how to introduce to the next section. And especially with the dress that she's wearing right here, you can see that she's going to take a night to the town. Now this one I do have to say that I don't like at all. It's this one right here. And the reason being that the colors are too close to each other and her being on the same plane of field of focus is actually very distracting because again, everything is in focus. So you can see all the details and things can be distracting. In this case, it is all the detail in the art again with her and with her dress being almost the same color as the painting itself, it kind of all blends in together. Yeah, and the harsh lighting doesn't help at all. And even on this one, you can see that there's harsh lighting and it doesn't really help out both in ISO and in the shape of the face. Although thanks to Aya having good facial features, it doesn't hurt that bad. Next, we move on to actually using the bad light to your advantage, which is her laying down with the harsh light, as you can see right here by the shadow on the edge, that it is in fact a very harsh light, it's probably a singular light, and seeing in the reflection, it's shooting directly above her, and her in this pose actually helps add shape to the face, and adds a little bit of mystery to it. And the mystery is, with the shadow on the face, adding a little bit more drama to the picture itself. And again, I do like that one singular light with her laying down, on the side, again, costing that shadow. Next, we move on to an out of focus shot, trying to do the boyfriend, and I really don't know what to do about this cropping. I mean, this is obviously a different image than this one. This is like an out of focus shot of probably somewhere over here. I don't know, I don't know how I feel about this, and especially the cropping, this really throws me off. And coming back from a night on the town, you can actually see one more of those high key images they are really good especially in nature to do these and as we can see she's wearing lighter clothes and the background is light and plus her face is all even which is a key factor in high key lighting which i probably should have mentioned earlier but another factor is this light right here again so good to have that rim light and especially in these type of images it really adds a lot to the image and kind of gives off a more airy feel to the image but I don't like the posing in this image. I don't like how the toe is pointing straight towards the camera and the leg is too, kind of making her look, it makes her look like she's having a little bit of short leg syndrome. And especially in this one right here, you can see it even more. Now here is one where I actually like how they cut the page because it's right here, right at the bend of where the S curve happens, as I've talked about before with posing to make a woman look more curvy and more womanly. It sounds a little weird, but it makes sense when you take an image and it turns out like this. As we can see, bending the knee forward, digging the other knee in between it, causing this shape to go down. Her hip plus the page break right here actually helps cause an inward. And then her shoulder being up and then coming down with her neck up, down, up, down again, which is actually very nice. We can see that there's a lot of curves in this one, which is great in posing and makes her look great. And this time we have a little bit of the opposite of high key because she's wearing darker clothes. And as you can see, it is a little bit of a different feel from the white clothes than it is from the black clothes. And it does kind of seem like they use the brush over here to make this all white. So, I mean, there's some creative freedom there. Now we have this image right here, which I actually really like. We have high key, but then we also have low key images. And this is a little bit closer to low key. It isn't exactly low key, but it is pretty close. And that's because of the dark, dark, and then kind of dark background. Again, low key would 
come with the room lights. But in this case, there is some separation thanks to this white over here in the background. And I do have to mention, I really do like the light that's going on over here. If you see, I almost have this light. I just need to drop this like maybe like half a foot and then it'd be similar lighting to what she's having right here. And in fact, if you notice with my lighting right now, I don't know if you can see my eye, there is a reflection of the lights to see how high they are comparing them to the image right here. So you can see if I dropped it a little bit more, it would have helped. But then again, that's not the feeling I'm going for for this video. Next is the image that I like, but there's something really distracting about it that I'm not sure if I would say that I really, really like this image. And I do love the green tones that's going on around here. It is the color temperature and it is the couch right here because as you see on the face, there is a reflection from this coming to her face. And it isn't just the shadows lifted up green a little bit because that would have affected just the shadows themselves. But as you see, the mid-tones are also a little bit green, although the highlights are a little bit orange. So there was some color correcting done to this, plus some color grading itself to make everything pop a little bit more with the greens. But the distracting thing I was talking about is not the good lighting right here, not the good rim light right there. It is in fact this hand right here, which is actually bends very, very much and has pressure on it, causing these wrinkles. And this is generally why you don't go like this when you're posing. You just softly touch it because then it bends the skin and makes it look a little weird. And in this case, if she would have just done a different pose, maybe more like laying it down like this, then it would have helped up more, be more natural and be less like, oh, let me just get up from this side. Ugh. Here we have an interesting image and I actually like this because it's a two page spread, but at the same time, it's not a spread. Now we have a little bit of trickery going on with this one because as you can see, we have this image right here with the hair dragging to this side, but then the hair continues over here and actually has the arm up here, kind of making it look like she's laying down and her arm is up. But in fact, it isn't like that. And this is probably one of her sitting down and this is one of her laying down. And it's a very nice trick to the eye using the hair to make this all connect into one. So it's very artistic and I actually really appreciate it. And to see something different like this actually is really good. Next, I wanna talk about this photo right here. And the reason I wanna talk about it is because of the fact that the legs are over here and her face is over here. Now you might be thinking this is a little weird but I can see what they were going for. And what they were going for was making the face a little bit bigger and making the rest of the body a little bit smaller because as I said in other videos, whatever is closer to the camera is bigger and whatever is farther away from it. So here's an extreme example, but if I put my hand over here, you can see that it's bigger than it is of my face. But then when I put my face closer over here, and then you can see my shoulders look a little smaller compared to if I go like this. So again, it is that weird aspect of how close you are to the camera and of course the focal length of the camera and how much it compresses the image. But in this case, we can see that it is helping a little bit with the face and it actually helps up more in the chest area because it is a little bit closer along with the face. And plus I kind of like the feel of this image with it looking a little bit dreamy, but yet a little bit grimy with the green tones and the wet hair. Next we move on to another set of random bikini photos, which I don't think were totally necessary next to these images. And I don't know how to feel about this Dutch angle, makes it look like we're back in the 90s. Then we have this image right here, which I have no idea why this image is in here because it makes her look like an old person trying to run off and jump. I mean, there's not really much appealing about this at all. I mean, her running form isn't the best. And plus with her moving in action, we can actually see that it uses some muscles and not others, which makes her butt look very, very flat. Compared to some other images we've seen before where we've used the S-curve to our advantage. There you go, now you know why it's important to use the S-curve or else we get something like this. Now here's something else about when I mentioned if it's closer to the camera, it's bigger and yada, yada, yada. But in this image right here, we see that whatever is closer, again, take a look at it and see what is closer to the camera. Now, have you figured it out? It's actually the knee right here that's closer, making it look a little bit bigger than it does normally. Because as we see this knee back here, it doesn't look as big. But then again, we see her leaning into the image a little bit, causing her stomach to look a little bit smaller and making her bust and her face look a little bit larger. Or more prominent is probably the better word to say instead of larger. Next, they captured a very nice image which is actually super cute because we see a cute girl with a cute dog, but it is in the moment and I do love those in the moment shots 
where everything just looks good. Here's the cover image. I used to complain before why they didn't include that inside of the photo book. And now I kind of understand why because it does seem a little bit redundant to put it back in. Next we have like a collage of images from her personal library that she's taken herself or her family has taken. So it's pretty interesting to see. Next we move on to what can be my favorite images in this photo book next to the high key ones. That's these right here and although they're underexposed it does attract your attention because right here you can see that where the highlight is is where her face is kind of leading you into her a little bit more. Again with a flash this wouldn't have worked out because it would just be a random light on her and then not on anything else and would cause too much separation in this case. So kind of having her blend in a little bit is actually a little bit appealing plus these colors are just super nice together. This image right here I do have to complain about. They cut right in the middle. I mean look even right here on the preview you can barely see what it is. I don't feel like that was the right position for it. Maybe on the side. Next we have this image right here which is actually very moody. And I'm not saying it's moody because of how dark it is. I'm saying how moody it is because of the colors it has in here working with the shadows. And I say this because you see the shadows pretty much everywhere. But the places where there are highlights actually help define who it is and gives enough detail to know who it is but at the same time keeping it a little bit of a mystery thanks to everything else being darker. And those colors, very magenta plus red plus blue, actually blend in kind of well and actually add a little bit more mysterious tone to it. And lastly we get the last image which is actually a letter from her handwritten it looks like. And this is fairly nice, it kind of looks a little bit more scenic than it does about her and for the last image that actually helps with this being a letter. Kind of like how we seen in the first page that it was a little bit more about what's in front which is the title. Over here we see it's a little bit more about the letter and although it does kind of blend in a little in some of the darker places of the clouds it still doesn't distract me too much. Maybe getting a reflector in here would have helped out just the tiniest bits just to add a little bit of a catch light in her eye. Again catch light make it look a little bit more appealing a little bit more friendly and especially with that smile she's giving off it would help. And that does it for the photo book. I actually really like that. I didn't expect it to like it that much. I thought it was going to be kind of average. I was like, okay, X member. Uh, I haven't looked up who the photographer is. Uh, I'm just going in like, like, I don't know anything about it. But then when I started looking through it, I was like, there's some pretty good images in here. Like, the photographer has an eye for these things. You can see by the way that the shadows land on the face and other things. I feel like the only thing that needs a little bit more work is some of the posing issues that I had as I mentioned before. Maybe stuff with things being a little bit too in front of the camera making it look a little bigger or things pointing straight to the camera making it look like they have short arms or short legs. And again those angles of the hand and cropping looked good so nothing to complain about there. Headroom looked good. There was a little bit of weird angles in some of them but no, that didn't bother me too much except for like the one I called out. Now there are a lot of images in here I really called out the ones that I saw that were really good in photography sense and also bad in photography sense. There are a lot of images in here that are actually really really good if you're a fan of Shibata Aya or a fan of AKB or anything idol related in general. I feel like this photo book anyone who has an interest in Japanese could actually get it and enjoy it. That's not limiting to SKE or AKB fans or to even Shibata Aya fans that's more of a general term. So I do really recommend this photo book for you guys to check it out and pick it up because picking it up and turning the pages especially with that one that I showed where it was in two and it looked like it was one image that really looks good in person. So I definitely recommend all of you guys to get this and check it out. It is a little steep with it being 3000 yen but I do feel like they definitely made up for it with the terms of a little bit more of an artistic side of taking the photography in both shooting it and actually publishing it. So let me know your thoughts about the photo book if you guys have it as well. Leave it down below and let me know what you think about it. Let me know what some of your favorite images are and which one you think oh man why did they even include this in there. That does it for me. If you're watching this when this video comes out there will be future videos coming out since Nogizaka and Kiyakizaka are coming out with a lot of photo books. I think it's one every week. I don't promise I will release one every week but I will try to at least do something about it. So look forward to that and look forward to the weekly videos I do about the news which you can actually see at this end screen and as I say every single week thank you all for watching.